Hello, hello, hello guys and welcome back to Joe's Ventures and today I'm really excited to go through this really cool new DLC pack that we've got uh, for Jurassic World Evolution 2. So this is the Prehistoric Marine Species Pack, so this is the animal review for that. We look through some of the cool new lagoon animals and a couple of the cool little updates that we've got to the lagoon to really make this uh, least fleshed out part of the game really stick out a bit more, which I'm really, really excited to go through. So we've got four new species, including one that's from Camp Cretaceous. Uh, but we'll get into that. So we're going to be starting off with everyone's favorite giant turtle. Uh, we have got Archelon. When we think about the animals that have inhabited this planet the longest, it's normally the likes of crocodiles and sharks that spring to mind first. But Earth's prehistoric waters were also home to some mighty impressive turtle species, just like this one, the Archelon. Okay, so this is Archelon. So Archelon is a really, really cool prehistoric marine uh, turtle. So these guys come from the late Cretaceous. They are from the campaigning of about... 80 to 74 million years ago, so right at that end of the Cretaceous, and uh, have been documented around. It's really only known from the pair of shale in America, but they potentially could have more places where they live. Oh, there's a social animation, it seems. Oh, that was really, really cute. Really, really love that. So, the, as I mean, one thing, see, look, you can see over there, there's a social animation coming up. Ooh. They come up and bump into each other. Sorry for interrupting that, but that's the one of the really cool new social animations that Archelon has, along with a lot of the other marine uh, species in Jurassic World Division 2 now. But anyway, carry on, carry on. Um, we've got the pair of shale, so this is from America, and is really only found from there. And it's known from one species, which is uh, Archelon Echorus, I believe you say that. Well, now they're going onto the land, so we'll have a look at that. So these guys, as I mentioned from that, and there used to be a couple of other species like Cooperi and uh, Marshalli, but both were put in Protostega and Mycostega. And you can see there dragging itself onto land. So this species genus was named 1895 by um, George Ruber Wayland, who was uh, from based on a skeleton from South Dakota, which pasted into the extinct group of turtles uh, Protostega Day. And was actually believed to be closely related to the modern leatherback sea turtle because of that smooth carapace and stuff like that, as we'll get into. But actually, um, it seems these guys were uh, their own kind of group, the protostagids were their own group of extinct lineage of turtles. So as I mentioned, found in like South Dakota around the uh, Lake Companion Age period shale. Uh, a couple other species described, da, 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 da. and there was another specimen found in 2002, which is really cool. As I mentioned, they are a sister group, uh, well, the sister group of Protostegidae has always been considered the uh, Demichelidae, which includes the living leatherback sea turtle. However, I suggest these guys represent a completely separate lineage originating from the late Jurassic, removing it from the modern family of sea turtles. So they don't really share an ancestor with any other species of marine uh, turtles. They're kind of their own group that diverged back in the Jurassic, which is quite cool. So in terms of the size, the holotype is about 352 centimeters, or about 11 feet long. But the largest specimen is about 4.6 meters, or about 15 meters from head to tail, and about 4 meters from flipper to flipper. So flipper to flipper there, which is quite cool. And in life, they would have weighed about two to three tons, and they had quite a big head. They have a head about a meter long, or about 100 centimeters. So one thing that a lot of people kind of confuse about archelons these guys have a very interesting head they've got a very defined hook beef beak that would have been covered with a sheath in life look very much almost like a bird of prey however that would have been quite dull compared to a lot of animals and um this is given a little bit of evidence to their ecology as we'll get into they have quite large flippers very similar to the modern uh loggerhead sea turtle and they have a skull quite similar to that so that's how people kind of extrapolate their ecology in terms of the carapace uh, unlike a lot of turtles that have kind of a uh, big uh, plates along their back, uh, I've got the term of it, along the carapace, uh, these guys, very similar to like leatherbacks and smooth shells, these guys had kind of a more leathery carapace rather than a big bony one, which is quite interesting. 
But uh, unlike these guys, the first rib does not uh, meet at the first pearl, which is quite interesting. Uh, in terms of plastron as well, they have a big plastron, which is the under part, which is kind of hard to see, of course, when they're sitting on land like this. That's the plastron. And it's quite thick. And in like protostegids, they have a, like a single unit of a paraplastron, which is like a T-shaped and uh, as opposed rather than the Y shape of other turtles as well. They also have a continuous ridge that connects them all, which is also quite interesting. And also connects the vertebrae, things like that. In terms of their paleobiology, let's have a look at one on the... Because we've got two over there. Let's see if we can find one uh, in the water as we can see them swimming around. Because we don't want to just see them on the land, do we? So let's see if we can find one in the water. Because we have... We should have plenty. Let's see if we can find one. Oh, they're all on land, it seems. Look at you then. Really, really cool animal. Let's have a look at one with a pattern. Here we are, over here. So that's really, really cool. So these guys were most likely definite, uh, definitely obligate carnivores. So they had a thick plastron, which was originally interpreted to be going around the uh, seafloor, fighting, biting like invertebrates and uh, clams and things like that, and try to get them out of the mud. That was the original interpretation. Uh, however, some more recent interpretations suggest that Archelon may have been potentially eating uh, larger fish and reptiles because they have a beak that's well adapted for shearing. So fish and maybe even small marine reptiles similar to and, and the backs are maybe eating squid and jellyfish. However, they also would have been able to use them against other Archelon and also potentially eating lots of Nautilus species, uh, prehistoric Nautilus species as well. In terms of their arms, they probably had weaker arms and less swimming power than the the back sea turtle, which is quite well known for being quite a deep diver and also quite pelagic. So these guys probably weren't quite as pelagic, but they did not live in the open ocean, but they preferred shallow waters. And the flipper ratio to carapace ratio is quite similar to those of like the predatory Jelani the loggerhead sea turtle, which as I mentioned is predatory. So they most likely had a very similar ecology in that regard. So uh, swimming around chasing prey rather than feeding off the bottom like our older interpretations so this actually Jurassic World Evolution 2 and actually fits that much better and they had a broad body and would have been able to travel at decent speeds and like pursued active prey though not for sustained like they would have go through fast bursts of speed to be able to go and catch prey and escape from predators and would have been a good uh moderately good swimmer and able to kind of swim around as well and uh basically um swim around to catch prey and maybe done some overseas traveling as uh, these guys were big animals and could probably swim decent distance so um along with that these guys as we can see on the marine uh like lagoon kind of uh platforms these guys like most other species of turtles or pretty much all species of turtles they need to come on shore to nest so they'd come onto shore drag themselves with their flippers and um always oh, going to go back on again i think yep looks like it so let's see if we can find one swimming these guys are definitely interesting characters. Love to look at you then. So just swimming around. Okay, so they would have come on and laid eggs, uh, dug in the sand, lay some eggs and kind of run off. And the babies would have kind of hatched and kind of fed for themselves. Very similar in terms of uh, ecology to modern turtles or sea turtles. And they've actually, uh, we have some, uh, a lot of uh, specimens their flippers are missing because they're believed to be bitten off by potentially mosasaurs, uh, even or cyphactinus, uh, or even crushed by large adults when hurting on the shore, or even potentially just through um, kind of taphonomy. So basically as the skeleton decays, uh, parts of it uh, uh, wash, wash away and things like that, which is really, really cool. And there have been estimates that these guys, very similar to other species of turtles, they were very long-lived and potentially lived up to 100 years and may have actually died while being partially covered to in a, like a brumating state while on the ocean floor. But um, it's really not much evidence for that because it's mainly freshwater turtles that do that. Uh, in terms of its paleoecology though, these guys would have inhabited the shallow waters of the Western Terriga Seaway, uh, which was a muddy, oxygen-depleted sea floor, and was not very deep. It only got to about 180 meters or 600 feet deep at the deepest, and the average water was about 17 degrees Celsius in the Campanian. So this would have shared a lot of animals that we all know about. The Western Terriga Seaway is quite a famous kind of ecology, so it would have been living with animals such as Hesperornids, Lots of plesiosaurs, lots of seabirds, 
and also mosasaurs like platycarpus and mosasaurs mosasaurus and tylosaurus and things like that there's no evidence of migration between the northern and southern provinces but sharks were more common in the south with several sharks like um Cedar Lamna, uh, Pseudocorax, Squalocorax, and Squalos living down there. There also would have been quite large predatory fish such as Cyphactinus uh, as well. And other animals such as like ammonites and uh, bivalves. Like really big uh, bivalves named such as a giant isometrus, which is almost like a giant mussel. Oh, he's going to come up again. So let's see if we can find another one swimming around. We'll have a look at you. Let's see if we can see the other animations. But, um, yeah, really, really cool, and, like, large squids, uh, like, Bellamites and Nautilus. So, as the seaway kind of migrated southwards, Archelon was able to migrate with it, and the increased, increased threat of habitat or, like, predation on their eggs from dinosaurs and uh, prehistoric mammals may have actually led to their extinction, and the disappearance of the giant protist egg, it's actually, con uh, it's actually coincided with the rise and the increasing size of uh, the... Uh, Dutchbrochylids, which is like the early ancestors of animals such as the leatherback sea turtle. So they're more or less abundant in the latest Maastrichtian as well, and like the latest Cretaceans, it probably died off due to cooling potentially, but we don't really know. While other turtles may have survived due to some th th thermoregulatory cap uh, capabilities, such as uh, with uh, gigantothermy, like with, uh, of course, everyone's favorite. Uh, uh, they're the backseat turtle because they're jacking turtles. Average water temperature may have actually decreased to 7 to 12 degrees at the, on the, uh, at the end of the Cretaceous, like right at the end, uh, depending on the CO2 levels. However, some Maastrichtian aged Kansas pear shells rocks may have eroded a million years ago, and it's very possible that Archelon would have done fine until right until the Maastrichtian. We just don't really have the fossils of that, so it's either basically we have evidence that everything cooled and uh, the West Ontario Seaway was driving, drying up, so they could have gone extinct. Or they didn't go extinct at all, and we just don't have the fossils to prove. So it's kind of either of those two possibilities. But really, really cool. Love to see this guy. Love to see kind of the leathery carapace and everything. Pretty spot on. The head spot on. Uh, everything else is spot on. The only thing that I'd say is wrong is these kind of ridges. These specific ridges are very specific to the ecology of animals such as whale sharks and leatherback sea turtles, which of course this is based on. Because these guys are quite deep divers and open ocean swimmers, these guys were probably a lot more in the shallows, more pursuit predators, more in ecology, similar to like a loggerhead sea turtle, so they wouldn't have had that and probably just had quite a flat carapace but i can see why they did it it looks nice and gives it a little bit of texture but really really cool definitely love uh this wonderful um archelon let's get let it seed swim for a moment because i think it's earned it such a cool animal love archelon so we're gonna let them swim off and do their thing next up we've got nothosaurus so this is based off the camp cretaceous one everyone's favorite so let's have a wonderful look at these guys told me this thing has legs i said no it's staying in the water i don't want to be receiving reports of it running rampant in the sewers showing up in elevators nothosaurus <laughs> not a chance of course had to make that reference but yeah this is nothosaurus how cool an animal that we've of course been wanting for a while haven't we let's see if you can find the camp cretaceous skin they should be in here somewhere let's see if we can find it oh here it is Oh, nope. Let's see, it must be this one. This one must be the Camp Cretaceous one. Yep, this is it. So this is the one that you'll know from Camp Cretaceous. So nice to see an animal from that show coming back into a cool little pack. So that's really, really awesome. So Nothosaurus. So this name means false lizard or illegitimate lizard. These guys are an extinct genus of Sarcopterygian reptiles. So that's the group that includes the ichthyosaurs and the plesiosaurs. Kind of the big main group of marine reptiles everyone talks about. And these guys are from the Triassic period. So they come from about 240 to 210 million years ago. Uh, with fossils being distributed across North America or North Africa to Europe and China. And it's actually the best known of the Nothosaurs. So it's a great example of their group. So in terms of their ecology, these guys were most likely very similar to uh, uh, 
like seals in terms of their lifestyle. They would have been potentially semi-aquatic or uh, oceanic, so they would have lived potentially in oceans and seas and stuff, so definitely marine, and lived quite similar to seals. Uh, they were about 4 meters long on average, or 13 feet, with these long webbed feet, as you kind of see there, and a uh, long, uh, possibly had a fin on its tail, but the obviously didn't have the interpretation of that here. However, there were some larger species, like um, Zangi or Giganteus, which were quite large, they got up to 5 to 7 meters. So about a little bit, maybe a little bit larger uh, than a saltwater crocodile, so that kind of gives you a good size of comparison, or about 16 to 23 feet, 23 feet long. So, Nothosaurus would have used its uh, legs, its uh, tail, and its webbed feet to repel itself and steer itself through the water. And you can see its skull there is also quite broad and flat, along with these very like needle-like teeth that are quite fine. They would have been used to catch all sorts of like marine animals, like fish and things like that. There's also trackways attributed to a Nothosaur from in China, found in China, that attributed the paddles as the animal kind of digging up the seabed and trying to find... Um, uh, with rowing motions and trying to stir up animals hidden in the kind of sand and mud as a way to get food and to kind of scare them out, which is quite cool. And once caught, they would have to shake themselves free from the mouth of the Nothosaurus, and often they wouldn't win because they'd get swallowed up quite quickly. <laughs> and um, in many respects, they are quite similar to the later plesiosaurs in that regard, but they weren't quite as well adapted. They're considered like a really early group leading to the plesiosaurs. And they thought to be the branch of Nothosaurs may have evolved into pliosaurs such as Liopleurodon and long-necked ones such as Copacritus. So they are quite an ancestor to most of the plesiosaurs that we know and love today like Liopleurodon, uh, Elasmosaurus, things like that. So quite a cool animal to have because of its interesting ecology. So in terms of how it's known, it's known from quite a few species as in like dots have been described from across the world. I imagine they want to use the biggest one, which is Giganteus, which I believe is from uh, Germany. Yep, which is quite cool. With lots of species described. So yeah, really, really cool. As I mentioned, they've got that ecology of kind of living in uh, the ocean or the coastal areas. And I loved how they managed to bring the Cretaceous, uh, Camp Cretaceous one in. So nice to see like some more representation from animals actually in kind of the... Uh, uh, mythos like Camp Cretaceous things like that and not giving us a new pack for it. Of course that destroys my idea for a Malta DLC But I didn't really expect that to happen to be completely honest, but we're gonna go over the accuracy of this guy so uh, it's kind of uh, Very JPified. It's almost like a monitor lizard with a weird head But um, as we will go through it, we already kind of did an accurate Nothosaurus a Hockal uh, 1215 made one but yeah, the face generally looks okay-ish. I'd say the head should be probably a little bit more flat. And maybe uh, the head, uh, eye should be a little bit more back as well. But those big teeth are pretty spot on. It really shows how well they were adapted for that. Also probably a little bit longer neck as well, maybe. Yeah, definitely a longer neck, actually. And uh, looking at the legs here, the they probably would have been a little bit more webbed. Uh, they wouldn't really have had claws, potentially. They would have had very paddle-like legs, they would have just basically looked like an early version of the paddles that you see in plesiosaurs, things like that. These are a little bit too much like a crocodile or a monitor lizard, a little bit too well adapted. There are some evidence that suggest that they may have never ever came onto land as well and gave live birth. Uh, they were just not good at uh, kind of, they were already completely adapted for living in the water. And um, same with the back legs as well, they would have been quite paddle-like, a little bit more like a plesiosaur than a, a water monitor. And their tail would have been a little bit uh, more like a, with a paddle on the end. Very similar to the flukes and stuff that you see on later uh, plesiosaurs. But yeah, this is, of course, this is meant to fit with the camp interpretation, not the, the accurate interpretation. But I thought I'd just uh, cover that. But we want to have a wonderful look at these guys. Let's see if we can find one. There should be one. Let's see if we can find one on a platform. I want to see them climb around. So we do have new animations and things as well. There's like a new, two new animations. There's a social animation on the water and one on the rocks here for uh, Nothosaurus and Archelon, which is quite cool. So let's see if we can, no, we're gonna try and speed through time and see if one will use it. Come on. Come on, you gonna use it? It's probably because there's like one each. Let's see. Ooh. That's a fish. Those are all fishies, actually. Let's see if we can spot one. 
Come on. Let's have a look at the different skins. I know there is a skin that we'll have to turn it on tonight. Let's have a look at night to get the skins. So let's go to sandbox settings, uh, environment. We'll go night and see if we can find a one with the uh, colors. And that's one. No, should be one here somewhere. I think that one is actually the bio, one of the bioluminescent ones, so that's quite cool. As you can see, the bright colours. I just love seeing the bright colours on these guys. Really, really cool. Maybe I don't think that actually is one of them. So we can spot this one. This is probably... There we are. There is, there is our bioluminescent one. So yeah, really, really cool. Definitely love this. Definitely a big fan. Nice to see they're getting a little bit of difference, so they get the Camp Cretaceous skin and a couple bioluminescent patterns. So that really helps set them apart. And plus they do really nice on the water. And uh, they haven't seen one jump out yet. Come on, are you going to jump out for me pretty please? You're probably going to do it. Come on, are you going to do it for me? Yep, you are going to do it for me. So we're going to see them climb up. So you can see... They're very much walking around kind of like a crocodile or a monitor lizard, which they probably want to be able to do in life. But it's still really cool to see that. I wonder if they can actually share one with Archelon, but I don't think they can actually. But you can see he's sitting there having a bask. I like how they use the kind of beach area that I haul, haul out area idea that they that I put in my speculation video, which is really, really cool. Definitely a big fan. I just love these guys. Really cool Nothosaurus. So yeah, really, really awesome. Let's quickly put uh, a sandbox back on day so we can have a look at you in the day apply so let's have a look at you in the day really really pretty definitely love this guy nice to I really love seeing like new mechanics and stuff added definitely really really awesome nice little roar there so yeah really really cool I do wonder if they can both use like you can have an Archelon and an Othosaurus on it on the same time I don't think you can, as, as evidenced here, but I guess we'll have to find out. But anyway, we've already rambled enough about Nothosaurus and Archelon. So let's move on to our next animal. So it's going to be everyone's favorite big, bad Devonian fish. We've got the big Dunkel, good old Dunkleosteus. you do, do not write off the Dunkleosteus as just a big fish. There's no teeth, just two pairs of bony plates. And without warning, they can snap shut with the bite force greater than a wolf, greater than a lion, greater than an Allosaurus. So keep your toes out of these waters, all right? Don't need to tell me twice, but anyway, this is our Dunkleosteus, everyone's favorite big fat fish. So these guys are an extinct genus of large, uh, Arthodia, or like a plac type of placoderm fish. They come from the late Devonian, so it's the oldest animal in the game now, from about 382 to 358 million years ago. And these guys were a pelagic fish and one of the first big apex predators in uh, Earth's history, so that's really, really cool. So there's about 10 species described, but there's really not that much research on Dunkleosteus, to be honest. Let's see the social animation. Kind of bit the tail a little bit. Let's see if we can find the do the social animation to so look nip his tail he's like oh what have you done <laughs> so that's this new social animation so cool i love the social animations anyway there's been 10 species described but there's not much studying to them even the most recent things kind of like shrunk the peeps as we'll get into so then was first found in 1867 by jay tenerell who was a hotel owner and also an amateur paleontologist found in ohio and described as its first as uh, Dynacthes herzoni, but then it was kind of relamed later as Dunkleosteus, which is a much better fitting name, I think, in my opinion. So it's, it was named in honor uh, kind of David Dunkel, who was the former curator of the vertebrate, pale uh, vertebrate paleontology at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And the name means like David Dunkel's surname, so it's Dunkel's bone. And it was originally thought to be a genus uh, in the genus Dynacthes, but kind of caught its own thing. 
eventually, and it's an own group. It's in this group called Dunkleostidae, which is a group of other placoderms and things like that, which is really, really interesting. Uh, anyway, there's at least 10 species described so far. I'm not sure how valid all of them are, but the most common one and the largest and best known one, so that's the one depicted like 99% of the time, because we always love the largest and the best known one, is uh, Dunkleosteus telluri, which is the largest. Size estimates range from about 4.1 meters to 10 meters. The estimates over about 4.5 meters are not really well supported, as we'll get into. The skulls of these guys can get at about 60 to 70 centimeters, or about 28 to uh, 24 to 28 inches. And fossil remains have been found in the upper Fernandesian Late Devonian strata of the U.S., like Tennessee and things like that. It would also be found in Europe, so quite a wide-ranging species, of course. God, I really love this guy. He's so cool. Uh, anyway, let's carry on. So because not much of this guy's fossilized, uh, usually it's only the head that's fossilized with maybe some, if you're lucky, find some uh, soft part uh, of the, these guys, which we have actually. So most of the fish is all known, but in fact, only about 5% of dunk specimens have more than the quarter of the skeleton preserved. And um, most of the reconstructions of Dunk kind of base their body off of much smaller uh, placoderms, or uh, Arthiodias, which are close relatives, which is quite cool. And they are one of the largest known placoderms, with older estimates putting them up to 9 to 10 meters long. But more recent evidence suggests that these guys were most likely 4 to maybe even 3 to 5 meters long. So that's kind of like the biggest estimates recently based on some much better evidence. So... Um, uh, lots of research has gone to them as well. Most recent, the most recent study looking at the sizes of dunk. We're going to go with the most recent one because uh, we like that, and it's actually pretty well supported. It's pretty good evidence. So um, the most recent effort, evidence for dunkleosis is estimated to be between 950 and 1200 kilograms for a typical about 3.4 meters or about 11 foot dunk. So which, that's quite big. And then a really large dunk would have been about 4.1 meters and about 1,400 to 1,700 kilograms. So this one's going to eat. So the older interpretations, this is kind of like from the 2009 interpretations, I believe. So these guys, it's, oh, he's going to go for the shark, I believe. Let's see if he's going to go for the shark. Oh, no, he isn't. Okay. But anyway... Older interpretations put them as 9 to 10 meters long. The most recent interpretation is about four, 3 to 4 meters long. But um, also evidence as well we have for that tail fins. Because these guys were much most likely open ocean pelagic predators, the other um, they used to be reconstructed with like kind of this really weird pedal fin, kind of like a, uh, like a shark almost. But these guys, it shows that these guys, because they are more pelagic and open swimming, they had much more shark-like flukes, which is quite interesting. But anyway, the old interpretations put it 9 to 10 meters long, especially like around like uh, the biggest 10 meters was Anderson and Wesnett, which put it at 10 meters. But the most recent evidence and the most statistically supported evidence, because it's quite a good evidence, is about 3 to 4 meters long. So in terms of its reproduction and like diet, these guys had these large jaws and incorporated a really strong locking mechanism. And they were able to open their mouths at quite high speeds, at like 20 milliseconds, and close and complete, close and open the jaws in less than 60 milliseconds. So quite fast. And uh, they were comparable to fish that use suction feeding. So how they believed to have fed, they would have created quite high bite force. So they would open their mouth really, really fast, create that suction, bring the prey into their mouth, and then crush them with their large uh, plates. Because they're not technically teeth, they are plates which is really, really interesting. And they are believed to have the highest bite force of any living or fossil fish and among the highest of any animal. So it's bigger than pretty much Megalodon and everything else. It's believed to be about uh, like 7,000 newtons, uh, 7,500 newtons or 6,000 6, newtons. So very, very big. It's the highest of every fossil fish and among the highest of every animal. And in addition to its teeth, uh, the teeth of a Contrictian thought to be or Oridus was thought to be found in Dunkleosteus. And uh, is actually believed to be actually stomach-like contents. So this guy would have eaten early sharks and things like that. And along with that, these guys would have been thought to be tachypelagic, so fast-swimming pelagic fish. And they may be fast enough to catch up with fast organisms like sharks and other large uh, uh, fast fish. And it would have been quite good swimmers and quite fast, which is really cool. And the fossil, and there's lots of boluses found with fish bones. It suggests that these guys would have thrown up like semi-digested bones and things, especially with either eating a lot of other placoderms. So they would have been spitting that up and doing that as well. 
And there's actually a specimen of Dunkleosteus and another big placoderm that's about the same size of Dunkleosteus called Titanoecthes, which was a filter feeder, shows to have punct puncture damage from the bite of the Dunkleosteus. So these guys most likely ate fish as bigger themselves and they ate each other as well. So shows that these guys were quite powerful predators. So in terms of reproduction, Dunkleosteus, together with most other placoderms, they would have been the first uh, vertebrates to kind of uh, internalize egg fertilization. So they would have had uh, the... The, the bits to fertilize each other internally or fertilize the female internally and then lay eggs as kind of how similar to modern sharks did it and some other placoderms have shown to be viviparous so it's quite possible that uh, uh, Dunkleosteus was uh, viviparous as well so that means where they would have had uh, kind of a placenta and all that very similar to uh, very get pregnant like a lot of other fish uh, a lot of other sharks and things like that and in terms of growth it's actually there's been a lot of research into the different uh structures that these guys had so they would have kind of grown up uh they would have had heads that were quite robust even as babies so they had quite powerful bite forces even as babies uh, which is quite cool uh, although on a smaller scale and it seems to be contrast as juveniles tend to be more gracile than adults they would have just been big and bulky from babies right to adults so we are going to let this watch this guy swim around. I want to show off the really, really cool, because it's not the social animation. I want to show off the animation of uh, it eating a shark, because uh, it does use the shark feeder, which is really, really cool. So I want to get the chance to show that off, hopefully. I'm just going to speed through, I guess. You know, sometimes dealing with uh, animals, of course, they never exactly want to do uh, do what you want them to do. So let's see if we can get the process going. We're swimming over here, actually. So he's probably going to come and do that over here. So let's see. Come on, do it for me. Do it for me. Come on. He is. Oh, no. He's probably going around to do it. Let's see. He's just such a beautiful dunk, isn't he? Such a wonderful dunk. Let's see if you can find another one going to do it. Oh, no, I think we'll leave it because we always, always see them, you know. Everyone's like, you got best and sort videos and everything showing it off, so we won't worry about that. But we've got our last animal to show off today. We've got everyone's favorite big, bad uh, ichthyosaur. So we've got one of the biggest ichthyosaurs of all time and kind of a new big bad on the block. We have got Shonisaurus. One of the largest known ichthyosaurs to have ever lived, Shonisaurus is a scientist's dream. Years of studying their fossiled remains filled researchers with a vision. A confident vision, but a vision nonetheless. And now we see it realized before our very eyes, ready to show the world. I love look at you because I like the colors on you. You very much fit like the pelagic environment. So, Shonisaurus. So Shonosaurus is a very large ichthyosaur, so they are uh, known from at least 37 incomplete remains and is found from Nevada. And these guys are also another Jurassic animal, so another Jurassic animal on the roster as well, which is a very underrated time in my opinion. So really, really cool. These guys come from the Lake Carnian, so about 237 to 227 million years ago. So as I mentioned, they lived during the Carnian. So this is the time where right when marine reptiles were starting to kind of take over and dinosaurs as well. And these guys got quite big. The ichthyosaurs kind of were the first big animals on the block, which are so, so cool. And so huge as well. Just look at these guys. So 
Shinosaurus populati had a really large skull that was about 2.75 meters or about 9 feet long and would have been about 13 to 15 meters in uh, uh, length, about 40 to 49 feet and about 21 to 29 uh, metric tons or 23 to 32 short tons in mass. So this would have been pretty much made it the same length as a uh, humpback whale, but half the weight. So a little bit leaner, but definitely still the same length as a humpback whale, which is an achievement in itself. And uh, the other species, Sesquinarensis, and these other large kind of uh, fragmentary or even partly well remains kind of uh, ichthyosaurs, like related to like Shastasaurids, so related to these guys, that could potentially got up to like 20 plus meters long and uh, weighed well into like... Uh, 80 70 80 tons uh, though the estimates are not quite as reliable as the estimates for shonisaurus of course but still a really really cool animal and definitely love this guy so shonisaurus as you can see it also has quite a long snout and its flippers were much longer and narrower narrower than a lot of other ichthyosaurs and while shonisaurus was originally reported to have socketed teeth uh they were kind of everyone thought there's a social animation oh that's cute that was really cute. How can you not love the new social animations? Anyway, they originally reported to have only the juveniles having like teeth, but more recent evidence actually suggests that even adult Shonisaurus were had lots of teeth in their mouth. They would have been a big, large kind of macro predator within the ecosystems, quite similar to like orcas and sperm whales, and potentially even maybe like a megalodon and its ecosystem being that big apex predator at the top. It was quite interesting. So they definitely had teeth in all ontogenetic stages. And it was also quite uh, historically depicted really, really wide and rotund uh, with a rotund body. But it's believed that their body, uh, since the early 1990s, the body was much slender than traditionally thought. So this is actually pretty spot on for what we believe Shawnisaurus would have looked like. And though it would have had a quite deep body compared to a lot of other marine reptiles. So this is pretty much what Shawnisaurus would have looked like in life. So good on frontier for giving us an accurate kind of shonisaurus which is quite interesting even with the teeth because i was even though i mentioned i was like oh it doesn't look like it had teeth but apparently this does have teeth as you can kind of see in there which is really really cool so it's also not known if these guys had a dorsal fin uh there are more basal uh ichthyosaurs like uh, mixosaurus which is a really basal ichthyosaur may have had them but we don't really know if shonisaurus had one so this kind of interpretation is still all right so in terms of its history, as fossils of these guys were typically found in uh, Nevada in the late 1920s, where there was uh, about 37 very large uh, ichthyosaurs found. And it's actually, its name means Shonisaurus, which means lizards uh, from the Shonisaur Mountains, where the, where, the, where the fossils were found. And S. popularis is the state fossil of Nevada as well. And there's also a, ses a second species found from Berlin, which is uh, in British Columbia, I mean, which is Shonisaurus sascarensis 2004, which actually is, actually is a Sassasaurus rather than Shonisaurus, but it kind of goes in and in between. Some consider them Shonisaurus, some da 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 da, but it comes from a little bit younger, a uh, little bit younger rocks, so it would have been about 10 million years younger than uh, Popularis, so it may have evolved. Uh, Shonisaurus Popularis may have evolved into Shikanosaurus and got a little bit bigger. In terms of taphonomy, this large assemblage, there's been like a recent paper actually on the uh, um, site where the, a lot of the fossils of Shonisaurus is found. It suggests that these guys may have actually uh, died in kind of areas with uh, uh, low oxygen, uh, poor water oxygen. So the bones would have been eaten by invertebrates and it wouldn't have decomposed, which helped preserve them. It's also believed that this would have been, uh, because there wasn't a lot of prey and not a lot of other animals except for Shonisaurus, it's believed this could have been a nursery for mothers bringing their babies along to uh, like uh, a lot of like um, sharks and whales do to kind of give birth in shallow water and give them a safe place to give birth. So they would have done that because like most, pretty much all ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs, most uh, big marine reptiles like that, most Sarcopterichians would have given birth to live young. So that would have been quite safe, made them quite safe for them and their babies. So it's really cool. And I know a lot of people think, oh, these guys were, how did they get so big? They were most likely, originally interpreted as kind of just squid feeders, very much like a sperm whale. But these guys, especially with the teeth, these guys were likely to have been macro predators, pretty much feeding on large sharks. Even sperm whales, they'll feed on sharks, big fish, uh, smaller marine reptiles, potentially anything they um, could get their mouths around. They're on that seafood diet, they'll see food, they eat it. But yeah, really, really awesome. And I love the patterns on these guys. 
love the uh, very accurate to what we know of Shiny Source in real life, and I love the patterns. Really much reminds me of like a humpback whale uh, in terms of its like patterns and things like that. I think that was probably one of the biggest inspirations, and definitely a great one. So definitely really happy with how the Shonosaurus has come out so um yeah so that's all the four animals from the aquatic pack and we can see that uh, the marine species pack and then we can see we've got the lagoon kind of new things there we've also got as you can see here the new uh kind of uh lagoon viewing dome that came as part of the free update so the lagoons have definitely got some love Though I do think they should get more love. I think the Mosasaurs need some animation. I've updated my actually next video, which I'm going to do for the uh, uh, free updates. I've updated that, so I'm going to include a lot of uh, new things in there from the older one to kind of spruce up the uh, lagoons a little bit more. But yeah, really, really awesome. So really, really awesome pack. It goes for about $10 or $9, depending on what part of the world you're in. But yeah, really, really awesome. Definitely one of the best packs to come out so far. It's definitely up there with like the feathered pack for me definitely a big fan so um yeah i think this is going to be a great place to end the video so i uh really 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 re hope you guys have enjoyed this video hope you guys like and subscribe always remember to hit the little bell icon to get notified of anything so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys like and subscribe and